Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. We're here. Uh, first, I'm Michelle Stradowski. I'm the Chief Public Affairs Officer for the Great Lakes Water Authority. Um, we brought you here today to talk about the uh, status of the repairs on the 120 inch uh, water main up near our Lake Huron water treatment plant and the status of the repairs. Um, uh, we, we, there was a thought about bringing you up to the site, but uh, it really is an open construction site and it's just not safe. So we didn't feel like it would, it would be good for us or for any of you. We wanted, you know, safety is our main concern here and allowing our teams to, to work and get their work done to, to do a speedy repair really was our priority. Um, today, you're going to hear from Suzanne Coffey, our Chief Executive Officer. Uh, and Cheryl Porter, our Chief Operating Officer for Water and Field Services. Um, following the speakers, we will do a Q&A. Uh, and for the sake of time, we're going to ask that everybody just keep their questions to two questions uh, at first. Uh, and I'll ask you to raise your hand in the chat function to ask your questions. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Suzanne. Uh, and I would ask Suzanne and Cheryl, before you start speaking, if you could say your name, spell your first name, and give your title for us, please. Sure, I will get started. Uh, my name is Suzanne Coffey, uh, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-C-O-F-F-E-Y. Uh, -E <clears throat> my title is Chief Executive Officer for the Great Lakes Water Authority. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wanna thank you all for coming today and for your assistance over these last few days in helping us to inform the public about the water main break and the Associated Boil Water Advisory. Your assistance is critical in our public information efforts, and we really do appreciate that. Uh, I've been out the site now uh, at, at our, and at our Lake Huron Water Treatment Plant, which is where I'm at today. It, it's in close proximity to where the break is. Uh, I've been here since Sunday, uh, and I'll tell you when you see it up close, it's really incredible to see the size of the pipe. It's a big pipe. Uh, it is the largest water pipe that we have in our water system. So 10 foot diameter, 120 inches, and it's a high pressure pipe. So it's a pretty, pretty big pretty big pipe. Uh, we are fortunate that it broke in the middle of a farm field and not in the middle of a roadway. Uh, you've seen the pictures of it and, and it's been, it's, it's, it's certainly significant. Uh, I'm proud to say that within 24 hours of the initial break, we were able to restore some water pressure to all the communities. Uh, and while the pressure is restored, it is likely that it is not at the level the communities and the residents are accustomed to. Uh, but the good news is that there is water available for sanitary purposes. This is thanks to the hardworking men and women at GLWA and the communities that are impacted. Uh, I want to call out specifically my thanks to those people and their quick work uh, to, to open emergency connections, to turn valves, to move water around the system and manipulate flows in the system to direct water into areas that didn't have it. And that's not just my GLWA team mates, right? That is also the member partner communities and the water utility workers because they were opening emergency connections and doing work themselves. Uh, so we're here today so that I can give you an update on the status of the repairs. Um, yesterday, uh, with Monday, August 15th, we completed the initial inspection uh, of that section where the break was and the 120 inch pipe went, you know, either side of that break quite a ways uh, and, and the inspection found more damage to the pipe than we initially thought, uh, which will require the acquisition of additional pipe. Uh, so to make sure that we have all that we need, uh, we have actually um, asked for another 48 feet of replacement pipe. You might remember we talked about the fact uh, that, that like a stick of pipe is either 16 or 20 feet long. Uh, so we need two of those now. Um, so we ordered pipe, we got pipe delivered on site, came up from Texas, it's sitting there, you've probably seen pictures of it, uh, but we need more. And so we didn't just order a small amount, we ordered more than what we, we know that we're going to need to make sure that we have flexibility in effectuating the repair. And this pipe actually had to be, is being um, manufactured right now. When we ordered the pipe that we ordered, when the break occurred, we immediately ordered everything that we could get in the U.S., there was no other pipe this size, this type of pipe available than what we have on site right now. So it's currently being manufactured. Uh, the new pipe is expected to be delivered on site on Tuesday, week from today, August 23rd. Uh, this means that we will need to add an additional week to the repair timeline and a week to the pool water advisories. 
I know that adding this week creates further burden on the residents and the businesses of the seven impacted communities, but I want you to know that we're doing everything that we can, everything in our capabilities to expedite this repair and return the system to full and normal levels of service. In the meantime, we're not just uh, sitting on our hands here. We are uh, we are working to do a couple of things. Today, they're gonna pull, uh, pull the damaged pipe out and prepare uh, the existing pipe uh, to accept the new replacement pipe. Beyond that, we are doing as much con condition assessment as we can possibly do while this pipe is out of service. So one of the things that is challenging with assessing the condition of water main is that it's full and it's a closed system and it's intentionally closed. So it's not easy to get in it. So we have people who are doing condition assessment now and we will continue to do condition assessment uh, until we have to button that pipe up to get it back in service. Uh, so before I turn it over to Cheryl Porter, our Chief Operating Officer of Water and Field Services, uh, she'll, tell you, she'll tell you about the next steps in the repair plan. I wanna thank everyone for their patience and understanding as we work through this very difficult situation. And I wanna thank our member partner communities, our partners in the emergency management community, the state of Michigan, and all our water utility workers, both in GLWA and the municipalities who are on the ground operating their systems during the emergency. Uh, this is tough times um, and we are working our way through it. So we appreciate you. And with that, I am gonna turn it over to Cheryl. Thank you, Sue. Good afternoon. My name is Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L, Porter, P-O-R-T-E-R. And as already has been stated, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Water and Field Services. As Sue has already indicated, I'm going to lay out some of the next steps in our repair. Uh, she's already talked about how we're going to continue to inspect. This is a very unique opportunity. And as much, uh, we want to collect as much information as possible about the, the section of Maine that we currently have open. Uh, that inspection and condition assessment is very important uh, for us to collect as much information as we can. We're in the process of preparing to remove the damaged pieces of pipe. Once those damaged pieces are removed, then that places us in a position where we can start to install the new sections of pipe. Uh, we do have more pipe coming, uh, but we're going to work with what we have. We want to continue with as much effort in our current repair as possible. Once the new sections of pipe have been installed, we're going to pressure test it. That's an important step because we want to check for leaks and we want to make sure that those are addressed before we uh, button the, the entire system up to start the disinfection and flushing process. Those steps are important to prepare us uh, for the water quality testing. With the water quality testing, there are two consecutive rounds of water quality testing that have to be done. Each round takes 24 hours for us to get the results. Those results have to be negative for the presence of coliform or bacteria. It is also important for us to note that GLWA is in conversations with the impacted communities, as well as the Michigan Department of Environment and Great Lakes and Energy, EGLE. Uh, we're talking about is there an opportunity for us to modify the current boil water advisory, given that our current state is showing the system having very stabilized pressures? Again, these are not normal pressures, so you uh, may not have what you are accustomed to, but we have been able to restore flow to most of our system. However, None of that is definitive. We are still in the planning stages of that conversation. So please stay tuned for future updates on this. At this time, the boil water advisory remains in effect for the following communities, the village of Elmont, Bruce Township, Birchville Township, Imlay City, the city of Rochester, Shelby Township, and Washington Township. In addition, there is also one business in Greenwood that is impacted, along with the industrial park in Romeo. GLWA's water quality team will advise when those affected communities can lift their boil water advisory. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Michelle.
Thanks, Cheryl and Suzanne. Uh, just so that everybody knows, we do have uh, a news release uh, detailing everything that Suzanne and Cheryl have gone over. Uh, and we have some uh, a few additional photos to share with you uh, on the new pipe, uh, as well as a photo of uh, the inspection that took place yesterday and uh, another photo of the new pipe that has already been delivered. Uh, I'm gonna turn things over to Molly Young. Molly is going to run the Q&A session for us. Uh, and again, raise your hand to ask a question, please. And please keep it to two questions uh, at a time. Thank you, Molly. Yep. Okay, so it looks like we've got one hand raiser so far from Eli Newman. Eli, go ahead and unmute if you want to ask your question. Hi, yes. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, so I, I guess um, one of the things that I'm just wondering is if there is any kind of compensation that is being considered for uh, impacted residents, you know, with increased, you know, energy costs, things like that, that, you know, the additional burden of having to kind of go through this, this boil water advisory, is that something that the Great Lakes Water Authority, uh, is there like a form or something that people can pursue? That is not something that we typically do. Uh, and it's, it, I would say, it's not likely to be done. And so, no, we don't have a form like that. Uh, can you explain like what, like what the, the rationale is? Is that, I mean, is this, you know, considering that people are being impacted in a pretty significant way? Yeah, I can, I can take that. So we are a governmental entity and this was an unforeseen circumstance. And so in those circumstances, if we were to say, just say we were to, to compensate the charges would go right back to the users of the system. There aren't any profit in this. It's not like we're a profit-making entity. Uh, so typically that's that's the way these things are handled. Thank you. Okay, and then um, Jeff, I just wanted to flag, I can't see the chat. So just in case there is anybody that's sending um, questions in the chat, um, someone else might not, might want to flag that, but it looks like we have um, a question from Rod Maloney with WDIV. Rod, go ahead and unmute. Yeah, hi. Uh, I have far more than two questions, but I'll start with the two that are most pressing uh, in my mind. We, we were told, you know, back during the bankruptcy when Galil was created, that the, the rest of the system is in far better shape than Detroit's system. I'm curious about the inspections and the maintenance and why this is this was an unforeseen situation. And and when was the last time this plant or this this area was inspected to know whether there was a problem? So so let me start. So I would say it's exactly right that the rest of the system is is in better condition than Detroit system. It's it's not as old as Detroit system, um, and I don't think that that this pipe is in bad condition, right? So this was very unexpected. This pipe is uh, expected to have many many more years of its useful life left. These pipes are you know fifty to hundred year useful life type pipes. Uh, so until we understand the nature of the failure, we're not going to know why. Uh, you know, different pipes fatigue for different reasons, but uh, the engineers are going to be in there. They're, they've taken samples. They're going to send those samples in, uh, and they're going to help us to understand why, because that's a good question. Why? I think the next question then becomes, you know, how are you going to prevent it? Uh, so the best thing we can do is do inspections, look for why failures occur, and then, and then say, okay, any similarly situated pipes, we're going to go do condition assessment on when was the last time this section of pipe was inspected and was it showing any issues during that inspection? So I don't know that this pipe has been inspected, which is typical, right? These pipes are closed systems uh, and it's only been in recent years that technology is available to run equipment through the pipe while the pipe is full of water and pressurized to be able to basically in an, in an unmanned kind of way do a condition assessment. So. Uh, I don't, I don't believe it has been inspected and I, I don't think it would be typical for it to have been inspected, say up until recent, recent when, years. When did it go in? It went in, in, uh, I want to say 73. And what was the life expectancy? Pardon me? What was the life expectancy? You'd expect the pipe to last 
50 to 100 years, very typically 70 to 100 years. Suzanne, do you want to um, give an update on our LSIP program? I can do that. Uh, so the LSIP program, so it sounds kind of cryptic, right? We have a program we call our Linear System Integrity Program. Uh, that's, a, that's a long way of saying the pipes in the system. And the system are being our water system and our wastewater system. Now, wastewater pipes are open to the atmosphere. They're much easier to get in, to inspect, just like you talked about. When has it been inspected? On the, on the wastewater side, we've been in our pipes within the last three years, all those pipes. Water system is very different. Uh, closed for obvious reasons, right? Water quality, uh, pressurized, and not able to be taken down. You can see what happened with this pipe here when it's going, going down, how many people it's, it's affected. So we can't just take the pipe down and walk it, right? All these people would be out of, out, of, out of water service. So when the pipes were built, they were built this way. We work on putting you know, more redundancy in, but the program that we've developed is, you know, how do we get into these pipes that we've got some, some relatively cutting edge technologies to get in these pipes now uh, that weren't available, you know, years ago, right? Information Age has helped us with these things where we can actually float. There's a smart ball uh, that we can float down the pipe when it's full. There's a pipe diver. It looks like a big arrow that we can float down. And these, these things can detect leaks and they can detect um, using magnetic uh, uh, type technologies. They can, they can detect defects in the pipe. Uh, so it's that kind of a program, but we've got to put access ports in and that type of thing. So we have we have a program. We launched this program a, a couple of years ago, put it into our uh, capital improvement plan, and we have been working toward it. You, you basically plan for the inspection for about a year, and then you can you you build it, build the access ports, and then you conduct the inspection. So we GLWA put that program into place in 2020. Uh, it will, we have about, I don't know, eight, I think it's 816 miles of, of transmission main. Uh, so it'll take us decades to get through all the pipe, but looking at the pipe and saying, okay, some of these large diameter pipes are high priority. They're queued up to be done in the first segments of this program, uh, but we haven't been in it yet, but you can bet that we're going to be now you know, strongly focused on this particular length of pipe with that type of technology. Great. Okay. Looks like we've got um, a handful of other questions. Um, we'll start with, I think this is Miriam um, with the free press. Go ahead and unmute Miriam. Thank you, Molly. I just wanted to confirm uh, the timeline because I know that initially the two weeks was from Saturday. So that would have been August 27th. So now the estimated date for water being restored um, is the third. That's correct. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, next, Kim Russell, XYZ. Thank you so much for taking my question. I um, was looking at the 2021 report card for America's infrastructure from AFSME and it gave our drinking water supply infrastructure statewide a D. What do you want people to know about our infrastructure and whether we have enough investments being made? So what do I want people to know? So we've been talking about aging infrastructure for decades, right? Uh, it's still here, right? Every year when we work through our charge increases, there's downward pressure on those charges, right? It's tough. It's tough on the pocketbook. Uh, we do need, we do need and would like more funding to do this kind of work. Certainly, if we had the funding, we would do these things faster. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But but funding's limited, and and we understand that people have household budgets and that we impact those household budgets when we set our charges. Uh, so more funding is necessary, and we certainly want to take advantage of any kind of funding. We, we did receive some funding, the infrastructure funding, uh, that came down through the state recently. We do not, uh, the way that we are, are established, we do not get direct funding from uh, the ARPA dollars and the infrastructure that funding that came in, so we buy for that funding, GLWA does. Uh, uh, with others from the state of Michigan. And so we have received some funding, but to be able to get into these pipes and do this kind of work is very expensive. And so we are, we are actively working with our you know, federal legislators, our state legislators to try to get more of this, these infrastructure dollars. They're badly needed. I'm thrilled and happy as a water professional to see the money flowing into the water sector. Um, but I would say that that we need it 
every year. It's not just a one-time thing. So you see the bridges, you see the roads. What you can't see is what we've got under the ground. And, and that's the tough part. But yeah, we absolutely uh, continue to buy for additional funding for water infrastructure. It's absolutely needed. And just to follow up on that, this issue, would it be caught if there was more resources for preventing, or this is a fluke perhaps? Yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily jump right there uh, to say that it would have been. We don't know what the cause is yet. Uh, so that's pretty hard to say, but certainly doing more condition assessments costs money. And the more condition assessments you do, the better you can do it getting ahead of these types of things. Okay, thank you. Um, and with the Oakland Press, go ahead and unmute. Anne, did you still have a question? Okay, um, we can move on to Faraz with WXYZ. Hello, thank you so much. Um, so the question I have, the first question is, what is the cost so far for these repairs? Cheryl, do, do we have, we don't have costs tallied yet for these repairs, is that right? That's correct. We have not began that process yet. Would you have like an idea as like a north uh, figure? So if we had to ballpark it, I'd put it in the, the one to two million dollar range. I, I don't know for a fact, but that's the best number I could give you. Gotcha. Uh, we, we hear, you know, in Rochester uh, and some of the concerns that we heard from people is, um, you know, that some of them are still not being informed um, or kept up to date. They also have concerns about, you know, restaurants and cafes not following the boil water advisory. Is there anything that the authority could do better in terms of like a informing people and also reaching out to businesses and making sure that they're following the boil water advisory protocol? So we meet, we have a meeting every day where the communities participate with us to get the word out. And we certainly uh, appreciate, as, as we said in the beginning, the fact that you all are pushing out our information. Uh, I would say the best thing that can be done is, is people just hold people accountable to, to the well water advisories. Uh, they're not something that are a suggestion. We are saying that they are required. You need to do this. Uh, and, and we'll continue to communicate every day we talk about how can we better communicate uh, and so and we work with our community so the next time we do have uh, a meeting with the communities we'll let them know hey we're, we're starting to hear that that some people still aren't being kept up to date and see if there's something more we can do but at this point I think we're pushing out we're pushing out a lot of communication uh, and doing a lot of interviews and trying to get the word out. And just the last thing um, I know you said that it's going to be uh, the timeline now has been shift uh, a week more um it, do you see this prolonging further or this is it sure cheryl you want to take that sure um we don't know what we don't know yet um we anticipate based on what we're looking at now that hopefully it will just be this next week we're going to continue to work and to prep and to get as far along in this repair as possible but I, I don't know what, what's gonna happen. Something can happen during the pressure testing uh, and, and we will have to work through those as we continue with this repair. And uh, as Suzanne has already stated, we're meeting on a daily basis to keep people informed as to where we are. And if there are any delays, we will be communicating those as quickly as we are aware. Thank you. Okay. Looks like we don't have any other hands raised right now. So we'll go ahead and do a last call for any um, final questions. And then if not, oh yeah, we can hear you. This is Anne from the Oakland Press. Okay, um, go ahead. I just want to clarify. I know this question has already been answered, but I want to make sure I understood it. There isn't really any kind of inspection process for these, is that correct? So we have a we do have a program and a plan for inspecting this particular pipe has not yet been inspected, but oh. it, it is high on the priority list and GLWA did stand up a program to prioritize and get into these water mains. So there is a plan, but it's uh, this particular pipe. No, it has not been inspected yet. Thank you. Hey. 
Um, we'll take two last questions, one from Rod Maloney and one from Kim Russell. Rod, you've had your hand up. Do you want to go first? Right, yeah, I just would like to clarify. You say that you're going to check it and check the surrounding pipe. Um, when will that actually happen, the inspection? Okay, so we were in yesterday and the engineers did go both sides of the pipe, making sure that we had the right repair plan, right? How much of the pipe has been damaged? How much do we need to repair? They took a look, made that assessment, told us that we needed this additional pipe. So we've done that. Uh, the whole time this is down, this week or so that it's down, these people will be walking the pipes wherever we can get in the pipe. Uh, wherever there is no water in the pipe to, to do inspection. So we're going to do as much as we can in the next week uh, or so until that pipe's got to be buttoned up. What we don't get to, we will put on a schedule. But the other thing we're going to do while we're in this pipe is we're going to look for, you know, what do we have to do to get that pipe diver and those smart ball, that smart ball technology into this pipe uh, to be able to do a good comprehensive uh, assessment of it. So I would say we're going to get as much done and, and, and I'm sure we won't get it all done, but we will get a big portion of it done in the next week or so. Okay. And how much, in other words, um, you said you had 860 miles. You're not going to be able to get all of that. So how much will this inspection encompass? Yeah. So this particular pipe uh, that we worked on dewatering is 26 miles long. Uh, so it's a small fraction of the 816 miles that I talked about, but it is the largest diameter pipe. Uh, so, you know, I hope that we could get through, gosh, I, I, I hesitate to give a number, uh, you know, maybe half of the pipe uh, with, with walking inspection, manned inspection, you know, inside the pipe right now, uh, but then also prep that pipe for us to get our pipe diver technology in, which is that unmanned while the pipe is full of water, because, you know, our, our primary goal is to get everyone back in service. And, and it's balancing that. We don't really want to leave everyone out of service any longer than we have to. And we're also operating the system in a pretty unconventional way. Uh, so we want to get ourselves out of the emergency, take advantage of the fact that there's no water in the pipe while we're in the emergency, but get out of the emergency quickly, but then make you know plans to get in that pipe with that, with that unmanned technology as quickly as possible. Okay, thanks. Kim, you have the last question. Yes, thank you so much. I just wanted to clarify. I, it makes sense. It's underwater. It's high pressure. You can't go look at it without turning off the water. Uh, but how do inspections work for water pipes in general? Or how often do they happen? When do they start? How old do they have to be at? Some of the, some of the basics. Yeah, so I would say this, that the, the traditional assessment of pipes or condition and renewal of pipes is, is just replace pipes every so many years, right? So every 50 or 70 years, replace all the pipes, right? That's been, that's been the typical way because there is no way to get in them. Uh, so if you take a look at a community, communities might have 12 inch water mains or 24 inch water mains. They can't get in those water mains, right? And they, and they, can't, they can't get in them when they're full of water. And even when they aren't, if they drain them, you can't get a man in there, right? You can't have a person in there. Uh, so water mains have always been a very challenging um, utility to inspect until recently with this unmanned uh, type inspection. So there isn't really a good typical, oh, everybody inspects this much of their water system every year. The, in, the industry, the water utility sector just doesn't function that way. On the sewer side, it's different. On the sewer side, we can get in those pipes. You can put a, like a radio controlled vehicle inside a sewer pipe because it's open to atmospheric pressure. There's not flow, it's not full. And you can run those things through with a camera on and you can do a good condition assessment. But water main is just very challenging. And years ago when these water mains were built, they were not built with access to even put this kind of technology in place because the technology didn't exist. Uh, so it's a big challenge right now. As, as America's infrastructure ages and we put a lot of this infrastructure in the whole, whole country in the 70s, we're now getting to a point where I'll say, oh, geez, now we're at this 50 year mark. We got to get in these pipes. We got to look at them. So that's where we're at. Thank you, Kim. Uh, thank you all for, for joining us today. Uh, as I said, we will have a news release that uh, you'll be getting uh, very shortly. Um, Rod, we will also get you that videotape or the video that you want. And we will also send the video out to everyone um, as quickly as we can. Um, so thank you all again. Uh, and we will continue to issue updates on um, 
our progress. Uh, our goal is to send something out every day by noon. Um, so please look out for that. And if you have uh, additional questions, you know where to find us. Thank you so much.